Hi everybody, this is Bug Ass Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Marvel Legends Captain Marvel Wave Cree Sentry Builder Figure. So let's go ahead and hop on into the review since this Builder Figure doesn't come with any accessories. So looking at the head sculpt, I think it looks really good. It's got some nice sculpt detail to it. And the paint's pretty good too. I like how they're using that translucent, marbleized, or not translucent, the marbleized uh, plastic for the purple and the silver. And um, with this figure, Hasbro kind of did their own take on it because the, the Kree Sentry looks totally different in the comics. Um, or at least the ones that I have, he looks really different. I just know his, uh, his classic look. And the thing that is most similar to the original comic version is this head sculpt here. And even then, they did take some liberties with it. But for the most part, I think it looks pretty cool. Now, looking at the body, I think it's the shoulders. Like, this this is a taller build figure when compared to normal uh, figures. But I think the shoulders is, is what throws this build figure off, is those huge, bulky, ball shoulders. Um, it reminds me of Toy Biz figures, which, which, don't get me wrong, I love Toy Biz figures, but some of them had some really ugly, ball-jointed shoulders that just stuck out from the figure, and that's what this looks like. And originally, uh, the design for the Kree Sentry um, was pretty, kind of pretty normal. Like, there wasn't really too much that stood out with it. Um, like, this should all be one piece. The torso and the shoulders right here should be all one piece. Because um, it kind of had like a, what I'm going to call a robot romper. <laughs> it kind of looked like a, it was wearing a romper. And this should be all one piece. Technically, all of this should be one piece. But... The shoulders, I really think they should have made the shoulders smaller and then made the the torso and then a separate piece that wrapped over the torso that covered the shoulders. I think that would have been the uh, the wise thing to do is just to make a piece that goes over the torso, over the build figure's uh, torso and covers the shoulders. Um, like I said, I think that would have been the wise thing to do, but they made it, you know, all separate pieces and it looks really wonky. Um... The the figure's feet are also pretty chunky. Um, some people compared this to a play school figure uh, because it does kind of look chunky. And honestly, I think it's really just the feet and the shoulders that make it look that way. And like I said, Hasbro kind of did their own design with this builder figure, which I don't mind. I don't mind that. It's just the shoulders and I think the feet that kind of make it look a little goofy, kind of like cartoony. But it has a lot of great sculpt detail to it. And I love that marbleization. Anytime Hasbro uses that, it looks really nice. And it almost looks like they mix a little bit of blue in with the silver to give it a kind of a uh, hue to it. It might just be the, uh, the swirls in the silver, but I, they might have mixed some blue plastic in with the silver plastic to kind of give it that bluish hue. And another thing that I really, really love about this build figure is the uh, the hips right here because let me see if I can pop it off here yes so there is the leg and that's how it connects up in there and I feel like Hasbro did a really good job of hiding that joint there like you this almost looks like one piece I mean it is sticking up but it does look like one piece so that is something I really like I'd like to see Hasbro do some more of that like cleverly hide the articulation to where it still has it, but you can't tell that it has it, um, if that makes any sense. Um, and here is forearms. He has a little bit of sculpting to them. And now his hands really don't have that much articulation because they used a really hard plastic for the, uh, the forearm guards right here. Now this, uh, his left hand is open and it has just a little bit more range of motion because this is a fist and, you know, it's like that. So, he does have some um, better articulation over here, but still, I feel like they should have used a uh, softer type of plastic. That way you could get a little more articulation from that. And then here are his feet, and like I said, they are really, really bulky. I feel like maybe they should have just not put the soles on here, because then, let me just cover it like that, that's how big his feet would have been. So I think if they wouldn't have added the soles, it would have looked just fine. So, uh, let's go over the articulation now. So, um, he has a ball-jointed head that's also on a swivel that can look up all the way. 
and really can't look down all the way. And this is kind of sharp right here. The, uh, the edge on the head here. It almost looks like it has a bowl cut. It's kind of sharp because when you're trying to get more articulation, it'll do that to your finger. It'll leave a place in it. So, yeah. That's uh, pretty troublesome. Um, so, that also moves side to side. He has ball jointed shoulders that can move out all the way. Now, since they do have that cut right there, you will have to kind of push them down and then up to get full range of motion there. So, so that's another thing I don't like, especially with the plates right here. That doesn't help. It doesn't help there. Um, it doesn't help that the cut ends right there, but it also doesn't help that the armor plates on the shoulder. You have to move it out like that to get the full range of motion. So that's another reason why I think uh, Hasbro would have benefited from making this all one piece that slips over the torso and over the shoulders. That way it wouldn't have hindered it. Um, yes, yeah, swivel bicep, single jointed elbow that can only bend in that far, which is not very far at all. Um, yes, yeah, swivel at the wrist that can move side to side and down and not up at all. It has a ball jointed diaphragm that can move back all the way and can crunch forward just about all the way and can move side to side. He has ball jointed hips that can just about do a complete split. He can kick forward all the way and back all the way. He has swivel at the thigh, double jointed knee, swivel at the ankle that can move down just a little bit and up just a little bit, and an ankle rocker that really can't move at all because of uh, the, the, ankle, the ankle things right there. Not really sure what they are. They kind of look like screws. <laughs> but, yeah, the articulation isn't the greatest. I feel like they could have improved some things. Like, oops, stop. Knocked my whole diorama right over here. Um, like, I feel they should have made these out of some uh, soft plastic, too. That way you could get more articulation in the ankles. So now let's do some size comparisons. And I will also be ranking the way from my least favorite to favorite. So, uh... That, that's something I started doing, is doing the size comparisons and ranking them, like, all in one. So, first up is my least favorite figure out of the wave, and that is Greg Gargoyle. Um, anytime there's MCU figures in a wave, I'm always going to favor them over the comic figures, and I just really do not like this character at all. I don't like the figure, I don't like the character. Personally, the character does nothing for me. I, like I said, I just don't care for the character. Maybe if I would have liked the character, I would have liked the figure more, but I do not. Here he is, next to Genis Vell. And I don't think he's going to stand up. But, um, this would have been higher if they would have actually put Captain Marvel. Like, the, not the, not Carol Captain Marvel, like Captain Marvel. Um, I really wish they would have made him in this way instead of Genis Vell. Or at least make Genis Vell in his Captain Marvel suit. That would have been so much better than this. Up next is the Bomber Jacket Carol. And the figure's good, but the head sculpt is horrible. I mean, she comes with another goose, which is also awesome. But you're basically paying for the same figure with a jacket and a worse head sculpt. So, yeah, that's why it's pretty low. Now, these last four, it was really hard to rank. Um, here he is next to Yon Rog. And I ended up uh, fixing the arms and the feet. I ended up giving him much more proportionate feet. And... It, it was better after I did that, like I shouldn't have had to do that, but I did. So there that is. Now, the last three, the last three were very difficult to rank. Well, I already knew n what number one was, so number one wasn't difficult to rank at all. It was the uh, the last three here. Like, you know, four, three, and two that I, I was constantly reshuffling. So, my third favorite figure from the wave is Talos. Not two. Um, here's number two. Number two is Captain Marvel. You might be wondering, why isn't she number one since she's the star of this wave? Well, that is because she didn't come with a builder figure piece. Um, I think the figure is really cool, but I feel like she also could have came with some effects pieces. 
But as we all know, there's going to be a Walmart exclusive that comes with effect pieces and have her powered up as binary. So, of course, Hasbro milks it for everything they can and makes 50 figures of. And for my number one figure from this wave is young Nick Fury. Now, he is also a reuse, but he does have some new parts. Um, I don't know, it was just a really awesome figure. I like that he came with the captive goose. Uh, the head sculpt is just really awesome. And he uses a new torso, which has that holster there. So, yeah, he's just a really awesome figure. And I think even during my review, I said this is probably the best figure of the wave. And even after I got all the rest of the figures in this wave, he is still my favorite. And finally, just for another size comparison, here he is next to the first appearance Captain Marvel. Uh, three inch Marvel Universe figure. And as you can see, this is more the correct scale. Well, it's still not correct, but more correct than, than the Legend scale. Um, he scales with it so much better. So, like, King Shark is a build bigger build -a figure than this. If Mattel can make, you know, $20 figures and still have a huge build -a figure, even if it has less articulation, it would still be nice to have a bigger builder figure because if Mattel can do it, Hasbro definitely can. So, I have some complaints with this builder figure. Like, the feet are big, those shoulders are just really ugly. And, well, the design, I don't really care about that. I don't care that Hasbro did their own thing with it. I, I don't care about that at all. But, the articulation, it isn't the greatest either. So, I did end up liking it more than I thought I would. Like, I, I thought I would absolutely hate this Builder figure. But it ended up being really, really awesome. Well, you know. I thought I would hate this figure, this uh, Builder figure. But it ended up being better than I thought. I mean, I still have quite a few issues with it. But it is better than I thought. So, that's my review. If you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.